Happy Tuesday, people. I hope you had an awesome Easter. Um, so thankful for Easter. So thankful for Easter. Free, free indeed because of Easter. Um, I am super reflective today. So I drove and I pulled over to a parking lot that used to be very familiar to me years and years and years ago. And I remember on a certain day sitting in this parking lot and I was playing with fire uh, and I was sitting in a vehicle with someone, a man that I was not married to and we were talking and um, I remember telling him, your lips will never touch my lips. Your lips will never touch my lips. I'm a married woman. Like, no sir. Um, but obviously those of you that have read my book, um, never say never, right? And here's the thing. I kept playing with fire. You know, I just kept going back to the flame and telling it, you're not going to burn me. But then every time I would get a little closer to the fire, that was stupid. <laughs> Like, if you really don't want to get burned by the fire, you don't keep walking back over to it, right? And I just look back, and I'm a stupid, stupid girl. Why did I have to keep going to the fire and telling it, no, never. I'm never doing this. You are never going to burn me. And then I'd walk away for a time, and then I'd come back to it. I told you you're never going to burn me when I could have just walked away from it. So I don't know if that makes sense, if that analogy makes sense to you, but I just feel like we're all tempted by something, you know, in this world. Um, our flesh is always drawn to something that could be alcohol for you, that could be lying for you, that could be gossip, that could be relationship addiction, that could be drugs, that could be pharmaceutical drugs, it could be um, uppers or downers or, or sleep pills, you know, that help you sleep. Um, I don't know what it is, but we're all tempted by something. And so if we truly don't want to get burned by that something, we've got to stop walking up to the flame. Walk away from it. Never even look at it again. And so I had another thing that, that's all over me today, and that's called discernment of the spirits. It's something that I've kind of learned about Oh, maybe a year and a half or two years ago, I was on a women's retreat. I had never heard about this before in my life. And I was raised in the church, uh, raised conservatively in the church ever since I was a baby. I went to a Christian university. Um, I went to lots of retreats, did tons of devos in my day. And I just don't ever remember hearing anything about the discernment of spirits. So basically what that is is being able to discern where our thoughts are coming from. So our thoughts can come from three places. They can come from ourselves, they can come from the Lord, or they can come from the bad place, the devil. And so I do believe in a devil. I know not everyone does, but I do. Um, believe me. Read my book if you haven't. Um, there is a devil and he has a plan for your life as well. Um, you know, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, and then God also has a plan for your life and a purpose for your life. And so the devil is trying their spiritual warfare. And I believe that a lot of that spiritual warfare takes place in our mind. So discernment of the spirits, really quickly, is actually a gift that the Holy Spirit um, has that we can call on. So Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. Like, that's amazing. If you really think about that, that's amazing. And so if that spirit is in me, the Holy Spirit, then the gifts of the spirit belong to me, but I have to claim them, right? So there are all kinds of gifts of the spirit, but discernment um, of your thoughts is basically quickly being able to identify where the thought is coming from. And so for years and years, all of that negative self chatter and all of the, you know, you deserve a season of fun. You take care of everybody. You, you do everything for everybody else. What do you ever do for yourself? 
you deserve a little fun. And I would hear that all the time. And I thought it was myself. And I would agree. You know, you know you're know, right. Just to myself, I would agree that I did deserve a season of fun. Um, and then, it, then I remember it was kind of like just a season. You know, it won't last very long. Um, and so then I think I was able to justify my choices because it was just going to be for a short time. I wasn't going to do it forever. You know, I would never be divorced. I would never do this. I would never do that. And so what I've learned is all of those thoughts that were being planted, that negative self-chatter, um, especially after my affair, because that's when it really, the attack really started happening, um, was, you know, you're a loser, you failed, you know, you suck, no one's ever going to love you, you're tainted, you're different, um, you know, just give up, just end it now, you know, just continually, just continually, every day it was on me from the second I woke up, and so that was obviously from the devil, okay, all that condemnation, so when a thought is condemnation or condemning you, then you know it's from the bad place, okay, uh, when you have a thought of it's peaceful and it brings you joy, or maybe it's a thought uh, like a little nudge to call someone, you know, out of the blue, you think of someone you haven't thought of in like 20 years, that's God. You know, that's the Holy Spirit, in my opinion, um, whispering to you, nudging you to check on that person. And sometimes it's like a divine idea or some bit of wisdom that you know it's, it's way too smart for it to be you. <laughs> That happens to me all the time. You know, like all this wisdom is not of Christy Neal. Um, but anyway, then you have just the thoughts that, that are your own. You know, looking at your child and thinking, man, they're just so beautiful. Or thinking about your day and planning your career and, you know, going to college or whatever, whatever. You know, we have our own thoughts, of course. Um, but there is spiritual warfare in your mind. And so I encourage you to pray for discernment of the spirits. And God will give it to you. And you will start quickly being able to identify where these thoughts are coming from. And so that's going to allow you to categorize them in a proper way, right? So when you're able to discern that a thought is from the bad place, then you can kick it out. You can push it out. And you can replace it with a positive uh, thought or a scripture, something like that. And then when you are able to discern that a thought is from God, then you know to prioritize that. Okay, some of you saw that video where um, I just come from the gym and I was gassing up and God said something, hey, invite this girl to church. And I'm like, what? That, you know, I don't feel like being churchy right now. This, that was not of me. That was a little nudge from God. And so I knew to prioritize that. Even though I didn't feel like doing it, you know, I did it. And that obviously meant something to her because um, God put that on my heart to do that. And he knows her. I don't know her. And so I just encourage you, listen for the discernment of spirits. Pray for it and then listen. Um, and just pause before you make your decisions. But make sure that you know where your thoughts are coming from before you agree with them and before you make decisions around them. Um, man, it can save you so much trouble. So much trouble. And discernment of the Spirit. You have that gift in you because of Jesus, because of Easter. He is risen. So choose different ministries. If you're not following me, I would love for you to. Um, hope you have an awesome rest of your week, and I'll talk to you next week. I'll help you next week um, replace that negative self-chatter with positive self-beliefs. Talk to you soon. Bye.